and just does things that are, you know, you just kind of say, wow. At an age when most players are thinking about retirement, Julius Peppers set a career high in forced fumbles while scoring two touchdowns. 34 years old, 13 years in the league, and he can do stuff like that. So he's rushing the right tackle, and he did his one-arm stiff arm move, and he just picked him up off his feet and threw him down. Just brute force. I'm hit. The only thing bigger than his hits was his mouth. I thought like one of the guys who um, brought out the trash talk. I think everybody should follow uh, around John Randall with a microphone. Red Rover, Red Rover. Let them just come on over. Boy, did Ware get out there quickly, huh? It was the Marcus Ware! Man, Ware came through there like a banshee. If you have coverage, DeMarcus Ware is gonna get there. They didn't block him. I don't know what happened in the pass protection, but DeMarcus Ware, I know he's really good, but you don't It is a primal game. It is a violent game. It's a collision sport. You can have the playbook, you know, the size of a Charlie Sheen prenup. At the end of the day, you want to rock people. You've got to make them afraid of you. And they, uh, they don't want any piece of him, man. I like Drew. I don't like hitting him like that. Watt backs up the talk with technique that is second to none. You asked for it, you got it. You asked for it, you got it. He is a leverage rusher is what I like to call it. He uses his hands to lean one way, feel where you at, and he goes the other way. Watt gives him the outside grip. JJ, he, he does a plethora of things. He can kind of give you a little hands and go around you. He turns the corner, nothing he could really do about it. He can try and run you over. Or he can jump underneath you. He shut my feet down, gave me a little wiggle, and got my feet stopped, and I was standing straight up. and. And buried his head in my chest and took me for a ride. Michael Strahan once again getting into the backfield and causing problems. First through. In 15 seasons, Strahan pummeled his way to 141 and a half sacks, including a record setting 22 and a half in 2001. The guys that classify themselves as pass rushers tend to be a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, and want to run around you, but that, that was not Michael's game at all. He was very good at taking advantage of you getting out of position. And if you didn't get out of position, he wasn't afraid to try to run you over. Woo, welcome home, baby. So, he was tough. It was hard to believe that a man this large could also be so nimble.
with his 6'4 frame, he was very agile. He would do this amazing 360 spin move and absolutely have a one-on-one -on -one chance encounter with the quarterback. Till the day he retired, he would always be using that move and it worked pretty darn well for him. Look at how this guy goes after the quarterback. Look at how he goes around this guy. And he wasn't just teaching us about football, he's teaching us about life and how you push through something and how you don't give up. Number 75, Deacon Jones is a Rams All-Pro. His stock and trade is quickness and his goal is the quarterback's head. In 14 NFL seasons, David Deacon Jones played for the Rams, Chargers, and Redskins. A five-time first-team All-Pro, Jones' most effective pass-rushing maneuver was the head slap. Otherwise, he could single-handedly take over the game. One man changed your offensive thinking for the entire game. In eight seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, Reggie White played in 121 games and recorded 124 sacks. His first year with me against Denver, I remember a Monday night game, we needed a sack desperately and he sacked John Elway. Two sacks in a row right near the end of the game to allow us to win the game. Seizing the stage just as he had against John Elway on Monday night, Reggie White recorded two of his Super Bowl record three sacks on consecutive plays in the second half to help secure a Packer win. and sheer relentlessness made him a new kind of linebacker, one the league had never seen and could rarely stop. The traditional ways of pass protecting, assigning a back to the outside linebacker, proved to be not applicable when he got into football. He was supposed to be dropping in coverage and he rushed and sacked the quarterback. I said, look, you got this wrong. You're off in coverage and not rushing. Oh, yeah, 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 you tell him. So later in the game, the same situation comes up. And do you know the son of a gun does the same thing? But this time, he sacks Neil Lomax. And George Martin picks it up, and we score with it. Okay, so now we got two sacks and a touchdown out of it. Everybody's mobbed them in the end zone, and they're jumping on top of each other. They come up the sideline, and I'm just staring at him cold. And he goes... I did it again, didn't I? <laughs> and I said, yeah, you did it again. And he, I said, we don't even have what you're doing. He said, well, we better put it in Monday, he says, because it's a dandy. <laughs> Taylor's instinctive approach to the game produced 132 and a half sacks, but it was his fiery will to compete that made him the only linebacker ever named NFL MVP.